Hi, it's Lel from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Today is the Christmas Bobble Edition. I am going to be showing you different ways you can get charity shop bobbles, make them your own and really turn them into something different. So I'm going to be kind of showing you how to put the ones together that are like the double ones or you can do triple ones. Then these are sort of bright. These are quite bohemian, these ones. Um, sort of Indian style, Mexican. Once you've got the sort of basic style, you know what you're doing. I'm going to be doing on camera how to finish these ones off. These have just got um, IOD moulds on them and we're going to be making them look pretty. Putting fabric, cutting fabric on and putting fabric on them. Glass orbs, showing you what you, kind of things you could do with these. Um, Indian bells, paper lanterns. I'm going to show you lots of different simple. Some are simple, some are just a little bit. You have to do the steps till they dry, but they're all reasonably simple. Um, how to make bougie, bohemian Christmas decorations. Now, anything you see today, you can just alter if it's not your style. You don't need to go, oh, well, none of this is what I would do because you can use Christmas related stuff if you're traditional reds, greens. You don't have to do what I'm doing. Just get this sort of initial sort of concept and just run with it. Right, so the first one, this is solid and it's quite heavy. It's not that heavy, but it doesn't end up being as light as a toilet roll tube. So let's get to making this one first. So if you just get your toilet roll tube and you can get two out of one tube and just kind of squidge it back to squidge it back together. You're going to need some dust clay for this and a mould that has a sort of um, like a kind of trim on it. So you could use the trimmings mould or anything. I use this one here because I, I just like this mould. Um, you're going to need two of this size. You can tell I've made a lot of them. I, I know exactly how much you need. So it's the same as moulding anything. Put your clay in. And push it down. And then get rid of your excess. And this forms quite a lot of my bubbles, this, this little mould here. But as I said, you could use the rope one on any of the trimmings or any of the sort of IOD moulds you could use. Pull it out like so and sit it to the side because we need two of these. Remember, I'm putting your release agent in, especially with the little fine ones like this because they're, they can be um, tricksy to pull out. Put it again and repeat the process. Get rid of your excess. like that and tip it over and pull that one out try not to stretch it as you go put your mold to the side so you have your two just gonna brush that over to the side next thing you need and I, I don't have the sort of exact measurements for this um, you need a ball of clay um, I think that's a bit much. So start with a ball, probably about this size. But before you do that, because this is where it gets quite messy, you are going to need to, I'm just gonna put some glue on the side here so I can use it from here. You're gonna to need to take a brush and first of all, glue it around the edge like this and in the internals and the external like that. Don't go too far down, but I think that's probably enough. Then roll your ball round and then just start making a sort of lid. This is the top of the bell. Um, kind of smoothing it out. It doesn't matter if there's too many cracks in it because it's going to get painted and it's going to get covered. It's just your lid. You don't want it too thick and I think maybe I've over we done it slightly and then what you do is put this onto the top of here like that then put your hand up inside it and start smoothing this edge down 
just like that. And it gets messier before it gets tidier. Remember and keep your finger up inside it because there's glue up inside there that's going to hold it all together at the end. Get rid of your excess. Now what I normally do at this stage is I wipe it with some water but I haven't got any on my table but when... No, you don't have to whisper my eyes. Okay. You don't need to get me any, it's okay. My evil assistant. Because this is just the sort of prototype. I'm just getting them started. So when you've kind of smoothed this out nice, like that, and you've got the top just the way you want it, and I think that's reasonably good. You have to mind, be mindful of that. See that little kind of pull away there. Now, when you've got that like that, it's probably best at this stage to kind of then pull the clay down inside. It's hard to show you, but I'm just pulling it down with my, pushing my thumb on the outer edge and pushing this and pulling it down so that it's completely adhered to the clay inside too. Yep. Yeah? Yep. Right, now, next steps. At this stage when it's wet, I would make your hole in it. And if you want a, quite a thick ribbon, make sure you kind of have a sort of reasonable sized aperture to put the ribbon in. And again, kind of smooth it out. This is where your little trim comes in. Get your trim and add your glue. Try not to go too crazy. I've been filling a little piping bag with glue recently. And then on the edge of where that is, just go around and stick it down. Just like that. Now these ones are a little bit fiddly, but you can make them in bulk and then let them dry. And then you've got all the time in the world to decide on your decoration. So make sure that that's all stuck down. And I got the inspo from these, from little brass Indian bells that they had, India, it was a kind of Indian pattern on them. And I really liked them and I thought, but when I started looking at them, the price was extortionate. And I thought, I'd like those, but I'm, I'm just not prepared to pay. And I thought, how could I make my own? And then I, I hit upon the toilet roll idea because I had a whole load of toilet rolls. Because I don't know if your children do it, but they, they get onto a new toilet roll and leave you the tube as a gift. Um, and they don't stop at that. You know, they'll collect them up. So I didn't have far to look. Um, so there we go. Not like that. And then you just repeat the same on the bottom. And this really is the basis for the bells. There's nothing more complicated in the bell design than this. Martin, your stomach is still rumbling. Martin's stomach's been rumbling all day and I've seen him eat. Right, round and round we go here. Now this is where I think I worked out I have one too many. Just pinch it and stick it back together. There we go. I'm not labouring the point on this. So, and then just make sure it's all stuck down. And then I would just get a clean brush and just kind of tidy up and make sure it's all stuck down like that. No gaps. I don't want gaps because that means it's not stuck properly. Sorry, Matt, I'm not really. No, that's right. Right, yeah, so this know. is what you should end up with at this stage. Yeah? Now remember what I was saying, I kind of cleaned mine off with some water here just to make a smoother transition, but I don't think that's too bad even if I was going to paint it. That's what you have, right? You let them dry overnight and you end up with this, right? So I'm just going to clean up and we'll get back to the, the next stage of this, which is the painting. So I am just now... Now you can do the insides coordinating colours like I've done with mine. I've got a sort of kind of bluey colour inside these and red on the outside. It's just this one because I'm sure you want to see something like this. This one I'm going to make quite Christmassy. Just to show you, just to prove to you that not all my bubbles are bohemian. 
And because you don't know who's going to look up inside your decorations, I paint the whole lot. So it looks like that. There's no, no evidence that it was a toilet roll. And that's the thing that you're trying to eradicate. Moving on to the outside now. I paint the whole thing, the the um, the moulds, the whole works. And I'm just going to stop the camera and I'm just going to do this off camera because we've got a lot to get through and you don't want to see me paint this because you can see me paint. So I've got, I don't know what these are called in other countries. When I was a wee girl, they were called scraps. And in Scotland, I think they're still called scraps. They're just little kind of things that are all attached. They're kind of vintage. They look like this back in the day, but they actually wear the images of the time. <laughs> um, I remember having some retro ones in the 70s. Uh, okay, so none of these are going to fit on my, my bell perfectly. It's just I'm going to have to try and make it work. It's just I want it to sort of vintage, just to show you a sort of vintage idea. And these are quite thick, so we're going to have to water them down a bit just so they go on. What else can we put on the other side? I don't really want to cut into... Was that the same one as that? Is it going the other way? Yeah, I'll take this one from this side. So, uh, the ones I made were covered in a sort of Liberty-style paper. Um, but you could, at this stage, you could paint a design on them. Or you could put tissue paper made by Marley decoupage paper. I've got made by Marley one somewhere. Um, you could do any of those things. Now, as I said, oh, look, oh no, I think we just still want to give you tab on. I think he's going to fit on here quite nicely. I might not need the Christmas tree. You know I'm not going to go with the Christmas tree. I'm just going to go with the Santa's. Uh, I could do with some something like that. Oh, I will go with Christmas trees on the other side. Right, so let's just kind of get a position in. We're going to have to cut a bit of a... That's a shame, but never mind. I don't seem that sad about it, do I? These are... These are I, I, and I, I'm not exaggerating when I say I think Martin got me these about six Christmases ago. <laughs> and every Christmas I wheel them out and I use some of them and I put them back again. Um, it's... They just keep on going, so I don't question it. Right, what I'm doing I see, now. I see things sometimes, and I think. And he yeah, buys them. I would like that. And then, and then. Not for any particular reason, yeah. just to add to her craft stash, you know. And it's funny when I go looking for things because I go, oh, I had forgotten completely. Because, as you know, I mean, I just do furniture really, and I'm not really doing a lot of little small crafts. And it's only when I really start looking at my things that I go, oh, I could do that. Right, okay, so I'm just making sure that these are nice and damp just so that they kind of apply a little bit better that's all I'm doing and you know what I haven't even got any Mod Podge here I've left it in my other room so I'll just use some of this strong glue now it's white so we have to be careful it's gonna so I'm putting a Christmas tree on this side I'll tell you what, I've got this more push down here on the floor because that's where everybody keeps it. Um, I'll use that instead. This is the high gloss. So if you want a high gloss finish, and I do with this, so we're okay. It's just, oh, do you know? Don't want as much as that, mind. On the crisp with the Santa next. He's going to go on there. Stick him down. And then we're going to have Christmas tree. Nope, that's not going to work, Leslie. I have to move Santa over a wee bit. I'll put him in the bottom of the right there. Do you know what I think I'll do? I think I'll have one either Santa either side of the tree. Now that's nice, isn't it? <laughs> that, that's that's nice, isn't it? <laughs> what are you laughing at? There, see? Yes. There he is. Either side of the tree. Now we've got a beer, but I wonder if we could get the tree on this side. Yeah, I could, but I'm going to have to really trim it this side. 
At this point in time, most of the cheese is actually gone. You're just getting the pointy part at the top. Oh no, Sam is quite sticky. Right, now, I just wanted to kind of show you some traditional ones. I didn't want you to think that all my designs were bohemian and nobody could, you know, like this wasn't going to go with your decor or anything else like that. So I'm just sealing this now with the shiny stuff while I work out what I'm going to do with the top. Now, with these ones, I cut the paper and I put them on the top. But with these ones, I think we'll go and we'll put some some bits of uh, some decor on them, some little bits of greenery and things. So I'm just going right over my beady trim as well because I'm going to put gold on that in a minute. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let that go off camera, let it dry for a minute, and then we'll come back ready with the glue gun to glue gun some stuff on the top of our little Christmas bell. So as you can see, I'm doing the top as well. Now this stuff dries incredibly fast. It's not that I, I don't use, I mean, I just would never dream of having shiny furniture, but I like it matte. But on crafts, and especially at Christmas, I don't think there's anything wrong with a little bit of... A little bit shiny. A little bit shiny, <laughs> eh, Marty? Nope. <laughs> just run that around you as well. And this also adds to the sort of solidness. Um, it's another layer of kind of hardening it all up. Right, so I'm going to just put the lid on this. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so next I'm just going to get some gold and I'm just going to go around the, the beady parts of the trim that I applied around the bottom like that. Yeah, and the same up around this part here. Like that. Yeah, don't mind if it's touched up in amongst there, I quite like it. So that's how it looks now, yeah. I uh, put my lid on my gold, because this is literally like liquid gold. Um, yeah, um, wipe my finger off. Now, next you're going to have to work out your ribbon. I'm going to go with this Christmassy stuff, because it's a Christmassy one I'm making. Um, and you have to kind of have about... I don't have a rough sort of idea of size, but I think this is about right. And I like it to have the two ends like this, yeah? Now you can put bells in them at this point if you want, or tassels, or whatever your heart desires. This is, I'm just gonna give you a starter for 10. Really handy if I said skewer or something, but I'll just use my new scissors because they seem to be, at this point in time, you might find that your clay is quite, if you need to make it a little bit bigger, you can do. I can only see. See, I can put the other side down. Yeah, see that. Yeah, so you've got your two loops. But then you need to work out how big a loop you want at the top. And this is a kind of trial and error thing because you're going to have to put a knot in it at this stage. So you're going to have to pull it right up to the top like that and just leave a tiny little part and then put a knot in it like this. You want your tails showing through at the end, so kind of like about there, I think. Nice trick, chunky knot that makes sure that it won't go back through. And then you've got your tails hanging through at this side. So at this point in time, you can thread a bead on it. Um, you can do whatever you want, but what I am going to do is I've got some little remnants of velvet ribbon and I'm going to try and make them look like holly. I know, it's a big ask, but we'll try. Um, trying to think how I'll, how I'll do this. These are just left off parts that I've ripped off Christmas. Um, oh, well, I was so forceful with that berry. I lost my berry. I'll pinch another one from here. These are just ripped up. Everything is, most things that I kind of use is, is kind of repurposed, upcycled, reused, repurposed. I want this to go around really tight because I don't want anybody to get and just clip off your your spare like that. Make sure there's no jaggy parts. And maybe I'm hoping this might make so sort of cute holly. It might not. I mean I've not done this before, so yeah. 
and I want to just get that. Uh, this is another new hot glue gun. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying because I don't have much luck. I just said to Martin a minute ago, oh, my hot gun, gun seems to be working. And he was like, well, he's just new. I went, I know, but I don't have a good track record with them. Don't want any traces of any hot glue. So just, I just want to kind of make sure that that's tidy there and stuck down. Now I'm wondering whether I might put one on the other side as well. No, I think that's just enough. So I think you can understand, you've got the basic concept, clay top, little any sort of mould that goes around the edges. Now, if you don't have this, do not worry, because you can use thick trim for this part here. So if you don't have this mould, you can just have thick trim and put thick trim around it. And you can either put it on the end or put it on while you paint it and paint it into the piece. So that's the that's the first one. That's a, that's a ho-ho-ho one. And this is a bo-ho-ho -ho one. Yeah? Do you get my joke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. Moving on to the next one. I'll just clear the decks. Okay, before I tell you about the salvage bobbles I've got in this box, I just want to show I just want you to show you the box. This box was my grand's Christmas decoration box. A, she couldn't have had many decorations, but my mum can remember when she was, it was when she was a child and it used to have a lid on it. And she thinks it's sort of kind of wartime. Uh, box. I have no, never. 30s or 40s or yeah, something. Yeah, about 30s, 40s. I've never um, painted over it. Um, it says fresh produce grown in Guernsey. So, it says British produce. Sorry, what did I say? Fresh. It says British, British, produce. British produce grown in Guernsey. Yeah, so anyway, that's just a little bit of the box. It's not a very yep, interesting box. <laughs> so when I go around charity shops, I just pick up all the baubles that I can. Now you get the really ugly ones, or you get sometimes you get some really nice ones that could has potential for something to do. I'm just not quite sure what to do with these. The other day I tried to separate them because I thought I'll set that to the side. We might be able to make something out of that quickly, right? Anyway, what you need for the baubles that are all put together, you need to this sort of size now when you get christmas baubles this wasn't wasn't like this by the way i painted on that because i was bored but it was not it wasn't going anywhere you sometimes find in the box that they're lose they've lost their tops um so let's i think i want I, oh no i was going to go with that one i'm going to go that back on in a minute right so i need another top so i just take the top off this one and go on to this one so you need two baubles for a start off now, before you begin this process, I would find it much easier just to make sure that your caps are never going to come off. So just a wee bit of hot glue. That was more than a wee bit. And pop that back on there. And the same, this one's got a different cap on it now, so I need a bit more glue on it. Yeah. Now, the next part I'm about to show you, I would wear a mask. Um... The process is, put the hot glue gun to the side because you don't actually need this. You will need an all-purpose glue and you will need a heat gun. So you're going to get a bit of noise in a minute. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat the bottom of this up until, do not heat all the way through it. It's plastic. You're just softening it up. And when it gets squidgy, you're going to take this bobble, squeeze it into that one really tightly while it's cooling, pull it off, put the glue in there and put it back together. That is the process, but I have got giddy before and bumped away right through them and done all sorts of things. So let me just plug in my heat gun. So heat tool on and watch your hands. Keep moving it round. It takes a wee minute. If not, if you put it on a really hot setting, and this is hot, but if you put it on a really hot setting, you'll melt the way through it. You'll kind of know when it's when it's ready to go. It, it looks kind of funky. So, and the trouble that I've had, woo, the trouble I've had is trying to get them, trying to get them straight. They always look a little bit wonky because we're trying to do the process quite quickly. So, I think we're at that stage where we're nearly warm enough. Yeah. Put your heat gun to the side, get this bobble and put it onto there like that. See what I mean? 
it's squint again and there's no correct in it really because if not no it's not correct in it because look what's happened on the other side let it cool a bit and when it's cool in this part here you put your all-purpose glue you need quite a good dollop put this one back and put it back together so that your two ends are like that yeah i've got awful shaky hands today martin you must be making me nervous now i have over melted it at this side and it's got a bit of a divot in it but sometimes when they're not so hot, you can knock them back out. So I'm just going to leave that for a minute just to cool down a bit because this is the process. Now, I know what you're thinking, but you saw mine. You just have to go through the process. Let that sit for a minute. So I'm just going to go off camera, let that sit for a minute, and we'll get to the next stage. Okay, so I found another bobble to stick it together because I didn't like the, back, the squeezy part on the other side. When it's on, leave it on. So I did another one just off camera there. That's a sort of medium with a small. When you get it to this stage and you've glued it on, take a paintbrush and just get rid of your excess like that. So that it's reasonably, you know that it's glued down. You don't want too much glue on it because the next thing you're going to do is, uh, when I was doing the little bells, I cast extra of these little molds so straighten them out a bit this just simply oh maybe you've got, got butter fingers that's glued into the crevice into the gap like that now at this point I'm just looking at this thinking, you can make a really cute snowman out of this one and hang them that way white. You know, this, this is endless and you're using up things that people didn't want and gave away. Just clean off some of that. You don't want excess for when you go paint it. Now at this stage, what you do is, again, get your brush. I said to Martin, run over to the shed and get me another book bobble, but I think this one, I'd kind of started to paint it, didn't do anything else with it, so it was kind of, Kind of musty and a bit dusty. And do the same round here because we're just going to zhuzh up the ends. Oh, sorry, Martin. My That's paintbrush right. is incredibly long. Banging off you. Again, you want some of these. And you're just, this is kind of fiddly. And you're going round. And probably the best way to get this right is to use a pair of scissors. Cut it and join it together like that. It makes a sort of flowery shape. Clean it up a bit like that. You do that on both ends. Now from this style, from this shape you can do all the styles I showed you. What I'm going to do with this one though is I'm actually going to hand paint it. So I'm going to base coat it first and we'll come back to this one once it's dry. Because really at this stage what I was doing, because I was making these in the summer, <laughs> say no more about my mentality that's why I've got so many um, great time to buy Christmas decorations it's good in because charity shops. in the <laughs> summer you could just go in and go have you got any Christmas decorations they look like you were mad they'd come back with a box and they'd give you even the plastic container and say take them that's a pound and that's literally what happened to me in Jet, my local village right so you're at this stage what you need to do now is I'm going to make this one quite a bohemian one so let's just go now this has a funny squirt. Uh, you could do with a much bigger brush because I might be here till Christmas. I'm just going to start off showing you. So you're going to need two coats of whatever colour you want. If you're doing white, you might need three. Um, it doesn't matter that, that the bobble before has previously been glittery. You just paint all over the top of that as well with chalk paint. This is all, all the paints I'm using today is chalk paint. I don't use anything else. This colour is Annie Sloan's Florence, which is my absolute favourite and these sorts of colours will really match my living room <laughs> for Christmas. For the first time ever actually, I've always been quite traditional in fact, Martin is quite he likes traditional Christmas decorations but last year I said to him, 
next year I want a bohemian Christmas tree. I want all my decorations in the big tree in the in the in the lounge. I want them bohemian. And he didn't put up any because he knows that everywhere else I'll put traditional decorations. So just before, just in January, in the January sales when everything was selling cheap, I went into a shop and they were selling all the jewel toned bohemian baubles for like 49 pence. So I bought tons of them. So I actually said to Matt the other day, where are boxes of them? <laughs> I said, where are my, my decorations? And he was like, Oh, I know where they are. I'd hidden them in the I hide things in the weirdest places. Um, I do remember packing some away with my actual decorations, but um, yeah. So, and I, when I was away in York, when Martin and I had a few days away in the summer, uh, we went to uh, York, and I went to the the Christmas shop in the Shambles. There's actually there's a whole there's a actual whole Christmas, Christmas shop, shop all year round. In That's the all they sell Christmas stuff. If you if you're not sure about the UK, um, the Shambles is in York. It's one of the oldest, um, famous places to go when you're in York. Yes, yeah, um, it's, it's a kind of it's York, medieval. You know, yeah, yeah. York. We stayed at the one of the oldest hotels in York, and it was really funny because we went on a bus tour and they were pointing out a hotel, saying it was the most haunted. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know. <laughs> we were we're like <laughs> I think the skull and crossbones and things were giving it away. But the, yeah, we the strangest hotel. None, not a not, oh, it was so floors, funny. ceilings, and walls. <laughs> not a straight line on any of the them. Flo- your head was higher than your feet in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Everything ran down. It was so old. I mean, our cottage is a little bit like this, where things are off. But that was really off. And we stayed there, but Martin wanted me to, because I'd never been to York, Martin really wanted me to have the sort of kind of touristy experience. So I was very fortunate that our hotel was just across from the, the Shambles, which is a really famous place. And in the, um, I'll get to my story now. So in the Shambles, there's a shop and it's a Christmas shop all year round. And when you go in, they say, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Which uh, and, In the middle of July. Yeah. <laughs> but when I was in there, I wanted to buy some baubles, but all I'm going to say is, Oh, yeah. the price of the baubles. I bought three baubles and I took out a mortgage to pay for them. It was so, so expensive. And so I, I took a lot of notes when I was in there and I went, oh, I would like to be able to, I could probably make that. Well, I was saying that, but mostly, oh, I can make that. But um, yeah, so that was, I bought some some bohemian baubles when I was in the Christmas shop. So here we go. I'm just going to let that dry off now. Now, what I tend to do with them is I tend to just put them on a little bit of a string and hang them to dry, um, if we can get that through there, because this is all wet. I mean, I'm hoping it's dry enough to paint. That's the sort of base coat of this one. I can see a little bit down the bottom there I've missed. Right, while this is drying, we'll get on to the next one. I'll just clear the decks and we'll move on. I just want to show you these sort of grungy ones. These were the same Christmas baubles that I upcycled. I kind of apply these are all the these ones here are done with the primitive the iod primitive mold i just glued them on waited for them to dry um grunged it all up with a creamy brown and then sort of put the blue on with some watered down gold let it run let it drip let them let them that's how they ended up and that's how i'm leaving them i've got them to still to string but you understand there's nothing complicated in these ones it's just applying mold in a sort of pleasing sort of style that one there's had a bit of a bash um, and a sort of pleasing style that you like and then painting them in so that's those ones but i want to show you these ones because i want to make these ones really bougie and glittery and um a little bit ostentatious so how are we going to do it I mean, the good answer for me is I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll we'll work on that. Now, I've got some mica powders here, and I'm going to go with a sort of says sky blue. Don't need much; just put sky blue. And this one here is called gold green. You'll notice my hands are getting messier. My hands are always messy, but messy and messier. Who doesn't like making Christmas baubles? I love it. I love it. And here I've got my French French Sheet Tough Top Coat Sealer. This is the sealer I use for furniture. All I'm going to do is put a little bit on here if it doesn't run away. Yeah, that's probably not. So first of all, I want to give them a bit of glam. And then I want to give them a little bit of glitter. Ooh, 
Martin, you're, you're off. Martin's still got his really bad cold, so he's a bit. He's trying not to talk too much because when he talks, he coughs. And so. <laughs> I'm all right at the moment. Oh, it's been a shame. It's getting better. It is getting better. It is getting better. Now yeah. I've got it. I've got something different. I've got a really sore stomach and sore throat. So nothing too strenuous today. Christmas baubles. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to cover the whole thing in the, in the mica. I'm just going to kind of rub it in, um, kind of like put some of the sealer on first. Because when I dip them in the glitter, I just want these to have a little bit more sort of juice about them. A little bit of sparkle. This step isn't necessary if you don't want it to be. Um, it's just mica powders make a really nice job of giving it a wee bit of, a wee bit of shine. I'm kind of alternating between putting the, the top coat sealer on my brush and putting the green and some of the blue on it so that it's a kind of mix of both. And that's that's pretty much what I'm going to do before I put the glitter on. Um, these were done, you can see I've done the same thing with these that I don't, I just think it, that one they are in particular, but I have got, and I have done ones before with the rope mould, but any sort of mould will do it. And this, this mould here is on the furniture that I, that I did last week. It's from the something elements. Martin, classical you... elements. <laughs> yes, Martin, it's from the classical elements. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. True. It's, it's one you use all the time, Martin. Oh, yeah. It? I use it for everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's your, your go-to mould. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how you even know these things, I don't know. But you, you'll obviously pay attention. I suppose the years of it. Right. I'm kind of thinking that that's probably all I'm going to do with these. But you can see already that's given it. You, you, you're not going to rush the way I'm rushing. You're going to take your time and make sure that you get it kind of the way you want it. I don't mind if it touches onto the bubbles. It's That's not the end of the world. Yeah, so that's kind of like that. Whoops. And this one here, I'm just going to do the same way, but I'm probably going to do this one a little bit more with green glitter, but it's blue glitter I've got here, so we'll be doing this one blue. Now, I've got a bit of cardboard because I really don't want to be... Now I'm in the house, it's different in the shed. I could throw glitter around with gay abandon, but not so much in the house. So I am um, got some high gloss Mod Podge just because it happens to be the one on the table but you don't have to use that, you can just use ordinary Mod Podge. Next time I'm in the kitchen, Matt, and I need to get the Mod Podge from the kitchen. So with this, the high gloss, what I'm doing is I'm not touching all of it, just some of it. Because it's already got the top coat sealer on it, remember, and it's still already quite, still quite sticky. This is just kind of giving it an extra that sort of glue to it and then put some round here like that there we go that's enough of that stay now i don't think there's any other way to deal with this other than pour it on and get it onto the cardboard i think that's the that is the way i'm going here. i was thinking of the bubbles that i saw in york Now, I think we can safely say that's been glittered, can't we? <laughs> I think I think you can, yeah. <laughs> now, I don't want to blow it, but the best course of action I find with these is to take them outside and spray seal them so that the sealer is stuck so the glitter's stuck and it's not going to go all over your furniture and all over your face, etc. as you're putting it on. But this is the sort of glammy one. And I'll maybe string it as well once it's dry. So we'll set this one to the side just now. In fact, I'm just going to set it. No, that might melt it. We'll set it down here on the ground and we're going to get the glitter tidied up and we'll get on to the next one. The next ones I'm going to be showing you are these ones. These ones here are actually for my Christmas tree. So um, how do we do it? 
it's very simple i've got loads of different variations of them i can i mean i could get them all out but you get the general sort of gist um so you start with whatever color you want obviously as i said i'm trying to match my living room obviously these ones are for me all the rest i'm selling they're not these are not um you know they're not all for me <laughs> so you kind of measure your little you need to get like see lots of like get your fabric out and find lots of nice lots of, sort of scraps and a decent pair of scissors and then start with just cutting some strips don't worry if there's little frayed parts when you go to glue them down you can glue them down so you start with a strip yeah doesn't have to be perfect and you need some mod podge this is actually the fabric mod podge but any mod podge will do you don't have to be fancy it's just because i've got it um, PVA would probably do as well. You don't have to worry about the, your glue choice. So you just get your strand, your strip, and stick it down and try and get it right. Go over the top of it so that it's all stuck down. It dries really quick. This hasn't even been painted perfectly. I mean, I, it was just to kind of show you what I was doing because I've finished these now I'm not making any more of these ones I sat while Martin was editing videos across from him at the kitchen table and did these ones not so long ago when it comes up to the edge just kind of cut it off put a bit of glue in it and then stick this down and then just go over this side and you just repeat the process until you've gone all the way around um, you, you know you see the little strands just tuck them in like that with your glue with your brush so that's that one so the next one i would want um i think it always easier if you kind of work this way that way you'll kind of get it right <laughs> ask me how i know <laughs> <laughs> don't try and be smart about it <laughs> this is actually a different fabric <coughs> Sorry, I'm joking. So, and again, just push your, your little strands in. Pull it all the way around and then do the same thing. Now you can go again. If you want, you can have like, get cut thinner strips and do because I have done that with some of mine I haven't just stuck with the ones that go you know across again tuck your little strands and you don't want them so yeah, you've done all sorts of little shapes on yours I have I'm just about to yeah. show them like what, what on this one here yeah and this one here just lots of kind of I'm going to get to the fancy schmancy parts in a minute this is just kind of setting the scene it's like furniture you have to build it up in layers so you do that. So you could go along and you could put yet yeah, another sort of, uh, you could put cut this one and you could do another thin line. So you've just got a small gap, but I'm not going to do that. I've got some really pretty, I think this is all Liberty fabric. And I've got to be honest, it's not even mine. My daughter asked me to make hair clips for Poppy <laughs> about oh about a year and a half ago maybe longer and she had loads of little kind of scraps of liberty fabric and she said do you want that and i said yeah and then it sat in a bag because we got to the conclusion that probably just lose anything that was made so we didn't do that and uh, i was recently in in the little craft room and I found the bag and I, so I said to her oh, I found all your liberty little pieces of liberty and she said oh just keep it mum she said I don't want it so I was like alright okay I went, I'm going to make Christmas decorations and I showed her them and so she said can you make me some <laughs> you know, there's always a thing with Jamie if you've got something yeah, you really, you can you make me some things. no because <laughs> I'm in the middle of painting clogs um, I'll show you them at the end uh, I've did a channel membership if you're Join today, because today is the day of our channel membership, if uh, you want um, <coughs> if you want to see more of the clogs, I've done a whole 45 minutes video on the clogs. 
Excuse me. So bad. We, we're, we're absolutely we're loaded. We're not healthy, are we, Barry? No. Nope. So but we're forging can, on. We're forging on. And plus, this is quite an enjoyable thing, doing this. We're in the warm. We're in the warm. Yeah. So all I've done is cut those little little roses out of there and I'm gluing them on. Now, once you've got to this stage and maybe you want other strips and you've added bits, you can even th add things like trim at this point. If you wanted to put trim around the top, you could, or trim around the bottom, you could. So imagine this was all dry. You would hit upon something like this. So, see, I'm like Blue Peter. This is what I did earlier. <laughs> Mr. Rowan, he's pretty dead. What Blue Peter oh, was. Blue, <laughs> Blue Peter was a children's programme. It's still on, actually, when, but I used to watch it when I was young, and they always used to say, and here's one I've made earlier. So then you need a Posca pen. And then, really, now the sky's the limit to what you do. Um, you can do little kind of fluted edges um, down your, your bobble like this. Um, this is what kind of fancies it up a bit. Um, any sort of pattern you fancy. So this is the kind of the deal that I'm doing. Just do, do, do. And I'm not really even taking my time. I'm just, I think we'll look cute in a tree. Nobody is going to be right up and close and personal. Apart from Poppy, who will pull every decoration on the man or autumn. I make my house beautiful and Poppy comes in and she gets kind of obsessed by certain decorations and then runs around with them until she breaks them. Like I had a whole collection, I don't know why, of elves in the shelves. My elves haven't got hats. Some of them haven't got heads because she, when she was really wee, she loved them and she wanted them down. So I gave her them all to play with and now they've, they've got hardly any parts left. One's got one leg missing. So yeah, Poppy's the... Last year, I don't know how many times I redid the living room um, Christmas tree because all the bobbles were down the bottom because she kept asking for the ones at the top down until there was nothing at the top and it was all down the bottom. Right, so you get this sort of general gist here. You could then do something like... Make it look like it's been kind of stitched. Just tiny little... And this is a... A 1M Posca pen, so it's the, the, the neatest nib, the tiny nib. And this, if you wanted something bigger, there's a the big one I use in furniture is the 5M. But it's a wee bit big for these things. But you just do that and you just build up your pattern until you're happy with it. And that's what makes, I'm not going to leave it at any point, that's what makes the bobbles. That's what makes them all. Uh, that one here I cut in sort of fluted shapes and just went round and put dots on it. And I just made them all different. Um, that's that's exactly what I did. That one, this one here's got all different kind of fabric on it and pink pen. And so, and then once you've done that, all you need to do is pick a nice piece of ribbon. Um, if I can get it out. And you just need to string them up and you've got a lovely Christmas bobble. I like ribbon on my bobbles really. I can do it. Not the Indian one, don't mind. Something like that. I'll show you the finished side. My hands is awful shaky, sorry. Yeah. So that's another thing you can do. Add fabric to your bobbles and a, a little bit of design with Posca pen and you end up with something really quite fancy schmancy. So next one, I'll just set up for the next one. Okay, what did I do with this one to get to this stage? So I started with a glittery ball, right? And all I did was I roughly drew a flower shape with my hot glue gun. I just went round and round and round and round and round it while it was hot. And I had a bed of glitter and I just rolled it in the glitter, pulled it back out, shook it. And that was what the glitter made. The glue made the, the relief detail, the stand up, the raised. And then I just painted in there turquoise. It was a glittery pink bobble to begin with. So this is where it's at. And now what I want to do is, I just want to get some nice paper. This is one of my favourite papers. So let's just take a bit of this off. And all I did was start with the top one. And I haven't got these ones to show you. I've, I've packed quite a lot of things away to go to the show. And I think maybe these ones have been packed. I roughly kind of pushed in with the decoupage paper because I made them with my own decoupage paper. Um, it was... Um, my darling Clementine I used and I just glued it into all this, the kind of apertures 
um, I have you have to kind of remember which one you started with. I think it was maybe this one, and it never ever is. This one is the fiddliest of them all because they're never quite right. So you do that, you can give it a wee squish of water because water will soften it out. Set it down. Oh, get a paintbrush. And I painted it first only because then if there's no gaps with like the ones I did with my da my darling Clementine, I did them sort of orange before I stuck them on. Pick it off. Try and remember where we are at again. And all I did was I filled every one with my nice fancy paper and just moved along it like that. We'll do another one just so you've got an idea, but these are really, these are ones that are a wee bit more fiddly, but they really look good at the end. And it, it, we're having the reused hot glue. You've got something to kind of push in to, to give you the rough, the rough shape. It's not quite the shape, but the rough shape. Um, I made quite a few of these as well, so these are a good one to do. Again, squish of water just to soften it out. I'm only squishing my water because it's my, my decoupage paper and I want it to be soft and malleable so that it fits into the into the aperture. And I wasn't too bothered if you can see little bits, whoops, if you can see little bits of the, bl the blue. And I didn't want it, does it? Try that again. What's going on now? Look at the blue up. stick it down in there and then just wait for them to dry and they look really cool when they're all done especially with loads of different colour people do one more and then I promise I'm moving on it's just that I want you to kind of get the real idea of how they look um, around it like that our son Tom is in America um, He's in Fort Wayne. Where is Fort Wayne, Martin? Indiana. He's in Indiana. Yeah. So he's having a real, he, he's having a good time. He sent a photo today with him outside Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously and, a novelty for him. <laughs> uh, and, he, and he also sent me pictures of some shop where there was all these Bob Ross sweeties and Bob Ross packed lunch boxes and he said, You'd love it over here, it's all Bob Ross stuff. <laughs> and I said, Ooh, happy little accidents. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's how these look. And these ones look really effective. When you see it without that nasty gold string and you see it stringed with something like a nice piece of pink velvet ribbon on that one, would really make that one nice. So if you can imagine the whole lot done like that, and I would paint the top pink as well that I would pick that colour out and do it pink so that's another idea that you can do when you've got baubles right I'm going to set up for the next one okay so that same beautiful paper that I really like I think I know it's not Christmasy but for to me it's really kind of is <laughs> so I have stuck some card onto the back here just card stock nothing exciting I made this template now all I can see is it's kind of round at the beginning and it's got two squares like that. Do you, write how, do you like how I wrote template on it? I did that because I did many templates last night. It drove me absolute mad. I mean, Martin will tell you. I was about to throw it in the bin. So what are we making? These haven't been strung yet. Oriental little lanterns. Um, this one's got a tassel. This one isn't right. That was one of my ones that went wrong, you see. This is how I know this is right. You just have to play around with it with paper first until you get all your sections like that. This one here, I mean, I made the template up, so, um, and you just string them and you can put a tassel through them. Um, and they, this one's a bit big for a Christmas tree, but these ones here I think will be perfect. So I'm going to show you how to make them. So this is the general idea. And if I can help you out, if anybody really wants to make it, I'll photograph this on my mobile. I was thinking, I wonder if and I I'll, can make that. I'll, I'll send you, you know, it. Some kind of download. It thing. isn't perfect by any means. So if you can find a template like this, then that'd be fine. But anyway, you need five of these. So, and I've already got it on the card. So, um, I sat last night, Martin was busy, and I sat across the table, and I must have, I made so many. I even had him 
folded them at one point and I was like, how can I not do this? Because I didn't actually have the a Chinese lantern template. I just kept looking at ones that were made and trying to work out how they made them. So this is what I think. This is this is my thoughts. Um, so, and I wrote template on it because it was the one that I knew I was going to be using because I had a few templates. I didn't even have any cake. I was just... <sighs> I felt really accomplished when I got it together, though. I was like, look, Matt, Matt was folding decoupage paper. I was like, look. And he was like, because I'd just about given up when he said, one more try, and I, I did it on the last. This is going to fit in here maybe at the end, I think. So when you've got these, I'm just going to go off camera and cut these out because you don't need to see me cutting them all out. Okay, so I've cut out, I know how many times I say so. Um, I've cut out all my templates and what you need now is a hole punch. Now, I bet you have a better hole punch than me. I've only got a double one and what I do is I just I put it in the hole like that and just kind of roughly gauge where it's going. But I did say to Martin last night, I could do with one that just does a one hole thing, but Every going? year How when I make it? Christmas cards, I, uh, Christmas tags, I use this same silly, I bought it in the pound shop, it was a pound and I bought it about five years ago and we used to have a lovely big punch but I don't know where it is. So this is what I used but I was laughing last night, it kind of fell apart and I had to fix it and he said why are you using that and I was like well it's just what I've always had. So I ordered you a new one last night. Oh did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There you go. Now, at this point in time, give them a wee sort of, just a wee kind of bend. It's our decoupage paper, even though it's not our print on it, so it's gone on lovely and smooth. I just mod podged it onto the card, and it wasn't thick card, um, it was really quite thin, it's not the thickest. So I've given them a wee sort of bend. Now, next thing. I want to put a tassel at the bottom. Now, I don't know if you know, but the price of tassels is extortionate. Where the price of these little embroidery schemes are as cheap as chips. You can get like 100 for 4 99 So you've got 100 different tassel options as far as I'm concerned. So all you do is you pull that wee part off and take that off the beginning so that it still matches up in your width. Fold it over. So what I kind of do it is put it together equally first like this and then I tie it in a wee knot like that and we'll tie it it's because my hands are all covered in wash podge and so sticky put your two lengths there and then see just want to get a wee bit of a round edge of what that part smooth out your your tassely parts we'll get to that in a minute and then just take that another piece and just tie it round the top oh, normally I'm really quick at this sorry my hands are you know, I'm feeling more and more under the weather as this goes on. <laughs> there we go. Now, keep your two pieces at the top. Where have my other pieces gone? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you're not supposed to keep pulling parts like that, but I've just done it anyway. Then, top these parts at the bottom. Make sure that all your loops are done. And then what I kind of do is I pull it tight and I just give it a wee haircut at the bottom. Just like that. And then I've got a wee tassel. And that's how you make a wee tassel. Just, and they're cheap compared to what you have. Now, what do you need? You've got your card. You need some wee, I don't know what these are called. Um, I, I have no idea. They're little, they're little fasteners. They're the paper fasteners. Um, you need a couple of paper fasteners, any colour will do, I'm using red because I'm being posh but that's not what you need to do. So all your edges 
first of all just put them all on top of one another this is what i did last night now i've only made these many so you're gonna have to give me a minute to try and wrap my head around this like i did last night right so they're all like that in a pile and then i want to tie a knot up here in my tassel I'm going to make it a double. No, I'm not. It's not going to go be under any duress. Let's get rid of that flat end. Take this. Get my paper fastener. Kind of separate my paper fastener and I'll stick it through there until I've got something like that. Cut off that excess. Now, this is going through all of those together, the yarn tassel, and do that. Right, so you've got your tassel on this end. Now, oh, show them the back of that again. The back, there you uh, go. That's what they look like. So that's what they look like when they're, when they're squidged out. So then, this is where it all gets complicated now. I'm sure there's people out there that make these and go, what is she doing? But I just kind of flapped it all together in a way that I thought was pleasing. So um, I just kind of did something like this. There wasn't a do this one and then this one and this one. It just was what I did. And when I got up here, oh, but I didn't cut myself a bit of ribbon. Now I'm doing this one-handed. See, I'm so dexterous, Martin, look at me. Use my elbow. Cut my ribbon. Put my ribbon, get my little thing. Open it up a wee bit. Kind of get my ribbon like that. And I'm doing all this one handed. Now that's through there. Now I'm going to try and put the thing through all of them at once. Now this is where it gets a wee bit tricky. You just have to take your time. I think I think it's through them all, but I'm not entirely convinced. You'll soon find out. Well, it'll fall apart in a minute, but it hasn't. Now, this is where you have to be kind of, you've got to have kind of, oh, I let them ones go. Hang on a minute. You've got to kind of have kind of knacky fingers for this. Um, that's all I'm going to say, because then what you're doing inside is you're kind of separating your push pin with just, it's, I promise it is happening in here. <laughs> It's because my fingers are all mod podgy. All right, okay, I've got it now. And you separate it out. And the best way to do it is just kind of shove your fingers out like that. Hold it like that. And there it is. Voila! Sort out your tassel. There's some wee kind of rough bits up there that I don't like. I think that's part of, yeah, that's just neaten it up a bit. I think these are fab. And... Once you've got it like that, if you kind of manipulate it, you can kind of squish it and kind of then make it into more of a sort of kind of pumpkin-y sort of shape. Even as well, I was saying to Martin last night, it'd be nice if you put decoupage paper in the inside as well or painted them. But as a starter, voila, I quite like these. Yep. So there you have it. That's a really simple one. Well, <laughs> it's not simple. I mean, I did most of that one-handed. It's not simple when you're, you know, kind of like, doing the sort of fastener part but when they're done they're done i was thinking of making a big chain of them but as i said see these sort of edges you have to kind of manipulate them for a while like like this one here that i did last night i spent quite a bit of time folding and just getting it just perfect um and i did the same with the big one as well i just did the same you just kind of squish it up you kind of squish it down like that and kind of squish it in like that yeah. and then you and the more you kind of squish it the more you sort of get to where you, you've got no gaps you know just just kind of making because the card kind of bends so you kind of you're just squishing it until it's right but anyway there you go one little chinese lantern made with really nice paper Woo. so kind of the ribbon's not holding it straight right okay let's move on to the next one for my next one, I've got a little, it was a little a little plaster tin. I better take the price off of it and put paint on the inside already. And I didn't notice there was a wee price on it. Oh, 
I'll get that in a minute off camera. But what I want to do is, and it's going to take a couple of coats, I want to paint in, inside and outside green. So I'm going to go away and do this because we can't do what we want to do with it until it's been painted. Now, what I did get Martin to do was take it outside and he's drilled me two tiny little holes at the top here. Okay, we're going to turn this into a wee kind of scene. That's all we're going to say, scene. Okay, this is just a wee cute thing that I'm going to quickly knock together. Just need to make sure where my holes are. They're at the top. Uh, right, so what am I going to put in this? I'm just going to make a little sort of kind of vignette inside it. And I'm just going to put some, some greenery and things in it first. But I just need to measure the sizes. These ones are always really hard to chop through. Crimson fire it. <laughs> you can't hold a camera and I can. chop it at the same time. I can. I can. God, you're right there. <laughs> right, go there. I don't think it will work because it's not, it's that rubbery plasticky stuff. <laughs> Give us it back. <laughs> I'll try and do it. In oh, I think you did it, Matt. <laughs> Right, okay, so these are going to have to be glued in individually. But Excuse just me, to... sniffing. Martin, he's a perpetual sniffer at the moment. I'm sorry, everybody. So I'm going to lose that berry just now and just kind of try and... I'm going to try and wrap that around here just to kind of hold it in position before I glue it in. So I want some little bit of height. So I'm going to glue it in about there, I think. So... You don't need too much glue. Um, I'm just going to use the bottom of my scissors just to hold that down. I've got, you know, those little rubber finger things, but they're in the shed. <laughs> no much use to me there. Slowly but surely, with the craft room that I've got in the house and the shed, it's just all gravitating now into my utility room. Just, this is what happens. Uh, I don't very often do these, it's just because it's Christmas. I mean, let's get back on the furniture, maybe. And I want some berries coming from the top. Here. No, I don't. I want them in here with these ones. This is kind of fiddly. I mean, it's maybe not a thing to do on camera because you need to kind of organise it, but put your berries nice together. And then I want those kind of nestled in with those ones. Sticking them in there. Now, when you do something like this, how are you going to cover all these parts up? Well, first of all, I want to put some some of these bits in. So we glued in. Should maybe put these in first, but wasn't thinking like that. Just put this in the center. That's actually quite jammed in. I want it kind of peeking out. I want something on the bottom. I'm going to glue this one in. Pull that out a bit. Use my scissors. I don't mind if it's kind of kicking out a tiny bit. Kicking, there's a good Scotch word. Kicking. Right, so this is what it looks like so far. Now, how am I going to make down here it look pretty? I've got a bag of moss. Um, I want to start doing this stuff. Have a sniff, Martin. It's okay with I covered you. up my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't mind if the little woody parts go in as well. So I'm just going to cover it up down here with some moss. I'm just going to kind of load up some glue gun, put some glue down in there. Again, I'm just going to use my scissors because I don't want. When I first started on YouTube and I did a lot of crafts, my fingers were perpetually burned, weren't they, Matty? Permanently. I used to stick my fingers to everything. Yeah. Now, that's us kind of setting the wee scene here. Just don't want to have any glue showing. And it's quite sticky, so I'll just see if I can put some of this brownish stuff in. I'm 
the best product out there. Here we are. There we are. Right. So that's where we're at so far. Now I have these totty wee toadstools, which are cute, but they're the wrong sort of colour. And a minute ago, when I was all organised, I had a plus ten because I'm going to try and make these a darker red if I can. I'm just going to go down quite though. Let's see if I can make darken them up a bit, a little bit. I don't think that's making a much difference, do you mind? I'm not seeing any difference on camera. No, it's slightly darkening them up. It's just I didn't want them to. I, th I thought they were a little bit kind of artificial looking. I don't want them to look too cheap. Right, okay. For what that was worth, it made me feel better. No, I don't want that. Oh, no, do not cut wire with your new scissors. <laughs> I'm just going to get my position in first before I glue them in. Because I'm kind of lower than that. Do you know what? I don't even think I want the wire on them. See what I did there? Just going for it now. Right, so I'm not even bothering about position now. I'm over that. I want this one to come in. You know how they kind of go sideways? Here. I think over here somewhere. Try to dodge the camera. Yeah, I have no white. But it's, it's not the white I'm looking for. I've got just about everything out known to man now. It is all out on the table. This one I'll do, but it isn't the one I wanted. Um, I want to just do some little stars. It's okay. Film all show. Oh, that looks like a matchstick man. I don't know what that is. Hopefully that will help. I need that dodgy looking star. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Some little stars. Now what next? I have some trim here and I am just going to start at this edge down here. So it all goes up here. This has potential to bunny bunny fingers. I'm not going to glue it all the way around. I'm going to do pieces and parts. So, oh, that was going to drip on button on my hand, I could tell. Um, so this is just made out of an old plaster tin. So any little tins you have, you can fab wee decorations. And they're cute as, ah, ah, I can't even say anything on camera. <laughs> just, just going to let the pain happen. <laughs> Martin is very, very well versed of what I would be saying off camera. <laughs> It would be more than one word. <laughs> <laughs> and it wouldn't be, ah. <laughs> right, okay. I just want to get this little underneath part. Glue that down first. And pop that out of the top. Try and get rid of all the bits of moss and things that have stuck to it as it's been going around. 
So that's the sort of edge parts done. Now what else? I think, I think you know what needs in there? A little Christmas bow. I'm wondering if this is too thick. Oh, perhaps if I get the right end. I mean, I had things like little wooden Christmas trees that I thought might work, but I think this ribbon is slightly thick for a bow, but we'll, we'll see how we go. You know, off camera, I could tie it there if we go on camera, it'll be like a dog's dinner. I'll vote for that. <laughs> it's one of those things, time bows. I know, but it's when you're on camera, you just can never get things the way you would like them. You know, unless it's furniture, it tends to go, it tends to go my way, but. Just want a small one. I want it. That's the thing about bow tying. It takes a little while. Now, do I want it? I want to get rid of its big. Oh, I'm in a pinkle. Yeah, that's pretty cute. I'm wondering where I want it. Up in the stars or in the corner. I think in the corner. And that is it. That's that one. And I'll string it for the final reveal, but that's a wee decoration and it hangs up. And it's cute. Oh, I've taken off half the knots of my finger. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Look at the mesh round about it. I can see through the camera. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right. Crafting well, is not a tidy thing. No, it is not. It's certainly no. not with me. While the camera's running, I've also got these, which I also am in the making of. I ordered some of this. These are really big me and I mean, these are not for everyone, but if you change the colour of the, the um, background and you were sort of kind of doing something like this, then I thought I could just put the pom-poms right along the middle because that's how I roll. Right, why not? Yeah. yeah. Like that, you see? And I, when I saw that pom-pom trim with all the multi colours, I was like, oh, I was like, I have to have it. And then I was like, what for though? And I'd ordered it by then and I was like, right, well... Now does this thing when she puts she puts loads of things in the Amazon basket, right? <laughs> so I come along, I go into Amazon, and I go, there's, there's a ton of stuff in the Amazon basket. Do you want all of this? She's like, I can't remember what I put in there. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 you know, sometimes I just go, oh, well, I saw it. You know, she must want it, so I'll order it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes things... And then it arrives, and she's and like, oh, I, did, did, I, did, I didn't order that. <laughs> I didn't want that, but never mind. But no, I did see this, and I did want it, so... I mean, I'm digressing now. I'm on different bubbles, but this wasn't my plan. But um, this is quite strange. Uh, I think this pom pom bubble stuff is one of those things. No, no. <laughs> no I did I, you, this was one you actually no, wanted, I actually was it? I did want it. I did. When you cut pom pom stuff, you have to be really careful because it's got little sort of ties that hold it back together. So you have to kind of make sure that you don't cut through the ties. Sorry. <laughs> Just spun the camera around. So something like that. I'm gonna fix this. This is what was just an all ah. <laughs> it stuck in my hands. But yeah, that was what I'd kind of thought for those ones. So last but not least, this is the bubble that we made earlier, and I'm gonna just be doing the Mexican ones. The Indian ones, hang on, Martin, sorry, just focus on them for a minute and I'll just run through what happens with them all. Um, these, the Indian ones are, get to this stage, put lots of brightly different colour paint on and then just get a bit of a stamp and stamp them on and gold leaf here and then get old jewellery, you know, broken jewellery, just attach it for tassels. These ones are just quickly um, drawn with some Posca pens, with some, I painted the sort of rough flowers and did a sort of design. I, I, charity shops have like bracelets for 20 pens. I just strung that on there and made my own tassel. Obviously these are all the, my own tassels and it's just a painted bead. Um, this, that's what they are. I mean, they're not, these are not difficult. You know the shape now. So now, now you've got your basic shape. You can literally do any of these 
in any way you want. So I'm not going to do this whole one. I might do, but we'll see how we go. Um, so you're going to need some paint or Posca pens, whatever is your whatever is your want. So um, just trying to think how I'm going to start because it's just kind of like making it up as you go along on the bottom half I'm going to do hearts now I've had people asking me about homing in on my sort of line or brush painting and getting you know the sort of small details right for painting uh, I'll be doing that in the channel membership stuff I'll be kind of breaking down liner paint and the best way to paint with a liner pa paintbrush and things like that but if you're not very good with a paintbrush or you're in a hurry or you just like them Posca pens are the way to go with that one there's going to just be a really small one how do you like that right okay so we know that's a sort of basic design there and I think up the top what will we have I think we'll have let's just kind of separate it out to begin with so whatever pen you start with is just the one that's kind of like putting your design together. Um, like this. And then I'm going to do something like, I might make the top Christmassy. So um, I'm going to change my paint colour paint color, and go with this sort of green to start with. So let's just kind of do a Christmas arrangement in each one. So I'm just going to draw the berries on first. We'll do some holly and some greenery and some leaves and some something like that. Some mistletoe and more leaves and more leaves and more leaves. Now you can't see that, but I can. And I'm just gonna go and get the light the green and do something like just get it coloured in. Now you can colour it in solid and then come back in with a darker pen and do your details. Or you can um, just do it like an outline like, like this if you wanted with your lighter pen like this and then just do your centre of your leaf. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to be colouring them all in and then come back with my darker pen. I quite like it when it does that, see that kind of half coloured in, half not coloured in. I quite like that. It gives it a sort of quite hand painty kind of look. So even though it's been done with pen. Just gonna try and do some mistletoe here. Um, and in every one of these sections, I'm just gonna do complete this. But on each other section, I'm going to do something similar, right? So that's kind of setting the scene. I think we could do with something coming out here, maybe here, just some flyaways. Right, okay, so then you're going to need something like this. Actually, no, no, I'm going to do it with white. White will stand out better. And this is where you get a chance to kind of tidy everything up the way you'd like it to be. Didn't paint that one there in. I quite like to do this sort of shadow one where you're not actually on the line. You're bringing it across quite off it. Uh, I'm trying to be as quick as possible because But it, I think you understand. You've got your basic concept. You've got your basic shape. Now you're just putting your design together, making something really pretty as you go. Um, I'm going to put berries in here in the middle because right now it doesn't make much sense. Just, just a whole load of berries in the middle. One more here, 
only one there. Right, there's our berries. <laughs> now, we need something a wee bit more juicy in this, so I think we'll do, get the cream out and we'll do something like, and we'll do some, something like this. And add some cream in it. What now, right, so we've got these red lines coming down here, let's do something like this. And then you just repeat this on here and here and here. And then up the top, you can, you've got choices and you could either go with a green. You might, I think maybe I'd like to introduce some colour to this, but I don't know if I want to necessarily. Let's see what this looks like going around with it with gold. Well, this is, a, I've not actually made a sort of Christmassy one, so. I mean, I'm just trying to work out, I'm, I'll, I'll, do actual gold on these. I'm just kind of checking. Yeah, I think I might do some like this. Maybe some gold. I'm just going to change that bit of gold. That's a bit silly. One minute. Uh, just trying to find my gold. Is that in there? This one? No, it's here. Uh -huh. It is in here. But you get, I'm, I'm kind of like, aha. Well, I don't think this is it, is it? No, it's not. It's a different gold, but we'll see. I don't like not using it. Yeah, we we'll put the gold down in here. So I'm going to go away off camera and I'm just going to try and finish this one, just so you can see this one finished. And then um, we'll get to... Um, uh, showing you all of them together i won't be going over to the shed to stage these i'll just run through them again and you can see them all again and then you can go away and make bubbles to your heart's content yeah okay so we finished the marathon extravaganza of bobbles uh just a couple of quick things i don't want to talk too much because the women said i do an awful lot of talking so i'm trying to keep it to the bare minimum um this was this one that you saw me do at the end and all I did was I continued the design work along the top that you saw. I coloured in my hearts. I put a little bit of ribbon around there and I made it a tassel. Just two colours of a skein of the embroidery thread. Painted that bead gold. Strung with a little bit of ribbon. Put some gold around the edges but that's it. That's how easy these are to make. So that one there you saw and if I can just talk about this one briefly, I put some gold over the top of it. It was slightly too glittery and childlike for me. I, I didn't like it, so I came back and I added some glitter. I mean, sorry, some gold over the top of my glitter, and that's much more pleasing now, so I like that one, and that was being threaded as well. So this isn't, obviously, this is just a mock-up Christmas tree that we've kind of put here, but um, and because it's a very small Christmas tree for some of these baubles, this one already has a home because my mum came to visit and she said, oh, I need that as a, as a prize for something. So, <laughs> yeah, for a rural group, she was like, oh, I need that for a prize. So, And she said, I'll say it, it's one of yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I hope you've enjoyed this. All of these have been made out of charity shop, recycled baubles or old tins or um, toilet roll tubes pieces of cardboard nothing in it is that okay you need your little elements and things but you know the things that I actually started with um nothing really much to more to say about the bubbles what I will say is I am Martin uploaded a video to the channel membership and the one of the craft things this week was these clogs that I'm making um and I'll show you from start to finish how to how to decorate these clogs so that's what's going on this week. I've just got the clogs sitting there right now. Um, so today, right now, when this ends, channel membership is ready. All you need to do is click the link in the description box if you want to join. Or if you just go to our main page and there'll be a join button at the top and you can just join. It's £8.99. Pounds sterling. I'm not sure what the conversion rate for every other country is. But in the UK, it's £8.99 sterling and um we've already been through everything that you can get to join so 
that's it. I've got nothing more to say, Martin. Have you got anything to add to this joy this week? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, you know, channel membership is live right now. Right. Okay. So, so on you, Pop. <laughs> uh, and if we don't see you before, we'll see you next Sunday. Oh, and just one more quick thing. Sorry that I forgot to say. Somebody commented and said, I'm still going to be doing my normal videos. You are not losing out at all. You're not losing in any way, shape or form. It's just for those that want more made by Miley. But the normal channel will always yeah, be the normal we'll channel. Yeah, we'll still be here every Sunday. it'll still be exactly the same. No, no corners cut. The, the, your, everything is okay. Nothing will change. Yeah. Nothing at all. So it's all okay. I've not some, sold my soul to the devil. You're all right. You're good. So um, I've been left for made by Marley. Thank you very much for watching this bubble tutorial. If you like it, give us a like, give us a share, give us a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Please don't forget to subscribe. And the lovely Martin and I will see you next Sunday, Martin. Over to you to say bye bye. Bye bye. See you next Sunday. <laughs> bye bye.